So we're starting geometric proofs today, so you need to get your nose out. And this is section 2-4. No. So I'm recording. And we're going to start with geometric proofs. And section 2-4 um, is just some the introduction of a two-column proof. I did. And what? I don't think that I can record in Google Meet, can I? I have Google Meet on right now. You're saying if you say in the videos that to join Google oh, Meet the next day. Tell her, Adrian. Well, I'm going to join Google Meets tomorrow. All right. Okay. So um, we've done, we've had postulates. What are postulates, Trevor? Um, they're basically anything that's true. Anything that's already true. We don't have to prove it's true. Okay. We're going to add some theorems now. And a theorem is something that's true once it's proved. So it's true once it is proved. And we're going to have lots of theorems that have already been proven true, and the proofs will be in your books. And if you want to read through some of those, you can, and we may even do some of those proofs together. Um, but I think a lot of them, you're just going to kind of take my word for it. Okay? Um, I would like for you to have maybe, I'm going to get you a paper clip, and I'd like you to have about two or three pages in your notes where we're just going to list some theorems and definitions and postulates. Okay? Yes. Two to three pages. Oh, goodness. We're going to have hundreds of theorems by May. We're going to be learning this till May? Well, we're going to be learning theorems. We're not going to be doing proofs of them, but we're going to have theorems all year. Things that are true. You bet. All right, so here we're going to clip this together. And the first theorem that we are going to have is 2.1. So you might want to write, maybe you want to write theorems on the top of your page and put a, a box around it. And this is 2-1, and it's the midpoint theorem. Now let's think about a midpoint first. What does a midpoint do? Or where is a midpoint? It's in the middle of a segment. And what does it do to a segment? It cuts it in half, and what's too true about those two halves? <laughs> They're congruent. So the midpoint theorem, if you want to, it's on page 145, but I'll just read it for you and write it down. If M is the midpoint of AB, then AM is congruent to MB. So that's what it says, and I'll write that down for you. If M is the midpoint of a, B, better, you need to stop eating and start writing. Then, A, M is congruent to M, B. So this is our first theorem. And usually when we have a theorem, we're not always, but usually we're going to have a diagram to go with it, okay? And so I'm going to draw a little sketch here, because for me, I'm pretty visual. And for me to see something is very helpful. And there's my sketch. And it's really important you add all the different parts of that sketch, okay? And you'll notice this is an if-then statement. And that's where we started way back at the beginning of chapter two. We started with conditionals, which were if then statements. So if M is the midpoint, then AM is congruent to MB. So what I would like for you to do right now is I would like you to draw a segment, not using the letters A, M, and B. Use different letters. You can do that on your whiteboard. And write me this statement that 
goes with it because it may not always be these letters. It might be some different letters. So use different letters and go ahead and uh, write me. You don't have to write the whole sentence. I just want you to write this part right here that I'm underlining in red. This part right here. And can you put the little congruent marks there? Okay, and then I want, you're good, now I want this statement that's underlined in red. Oh, okay. Great, and so what's true about these two? Uh, yes, show that to me, very good. Good. So where's your statement? And we're using capital letters. All right, good job, good job. Okay, so that's the midpoint theorem, and that's what we're going to use today, okay? Um, so I would just like for us to do a little proof right now. I wouldn't put it on this same page. I'd maybe go a few pages forward, and this is going to be our first geometric proof. And we are given, and it's kind of long, and I apologize, I'm kind of are, but we're not going to do hundreds of them. We're going to do tens of them. C is between A and B. I would put this in your notes so that you have one in your notes, but I wouldn't put it on this page. I'd go two or three pages forward for your first proof. C is between A and B. Also, AC equal is congruent to CB. And that's what we're given, and we have to prove that C is the midpoint of AB. Given. 
Now, what other thing, many things, but another thing that we can use to prove things is definition. And the definition of a midpoint is that it cuts something into two equal parts. So, what we're going to do next, but do we have equal here? No, we have congruence. So, something that we can do is we can say that this is saying that the segments are congruent, but now we're going to go and we're going to say that they're equal. What's the difference here? What did I not include on number two that I did on number one? The segment above. So this is talking about the measurement. And the way that we go from congruent to equal is we say that that is the definition of congruent segment. So we say definition of, and I'm going to abbreviate, congruent segment. And now, if I have two things that are equal, what does that mean? That means that they were cut in half, and that means that there was a midpoint. So I can say now, for number three, I can say C is, and I'm going to abbreviate midpoint, MP of the segment. And the reason I can say that is because of the definition of midpoint, which lets Take our books and let's turn back to page 26. I'll get that for you in just a minute. Turn to page 26. And I believe that the word midpoint is in yellow there. Page 26. Levi, could you find midpoint and can you read the definition? The midpoint of a segment is not properly because that is open. Okay. So it's halfway between, cut into the third equal. So for number three, I can write definition of midpoint. So we just kind of proved that theorem right there. We proved it, so now we know it's true and we can use it from now on. Okay? Now there's lots of different ways that we can prove things. We can use postulates, theorems, and definitions. Those are the main things that we can use. So you may want to write that down, uh, maybe at the beginning of where we clipped our notes together. You might want to write down that we can use the postulates, theorems, and definitions to prove. So for instance, if I say that something is 90 degrees, an angle is 90 degrees, what does that mean? It's a right angle. That's the definition of a right angle. So there's a definition right there. If I say that I have two points, so I must have a line, what is that? That's a postulate 2, 1, isn't it? We have two points in the line, so let's do them. Um, if I say that two angles are complementary so that they so they equal 90 degrees, what's that the definition of? Complementary angle. Okay? Um, so there's lots of different things. So what I want to do now is I just want to take a few minutes, and Savannah, I took a picture of this and emailed it to you. I just want to take a few minutes for us to go through this. These are just one-step proofs right here. And so you're just going to write one thing down for each one. And then we're going to do three proofs together. Okay, so let's look at number one. It says one through six, determine the justification for step two in each exercise. It could be a property, definition, or postulate. So number one, read that one, please, Gunnar. Uh, determine the justification for No, step read number one, please. Uh, angle two is the right angle. And that's given. So then I say angle two. The measure of angle two is 90 degrees. Why? Definition, definition of right angle. And you can write def, D-E-F. So definition of a right angle. Okay. Number two. Adrian, can you read that one, please? Angle four is the angle two. And that's given. And then 
Um, number two says the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle six equals 180. Why can we say that? The definition of supplementary angle. Definition of supplementary angle. So you can write depth of sup angle. Okay, now number three, this is one um, that is a property, and it was on your uh, algebraic property sheet that I gave you. So um, could you read that one, please, uh, Trevor? Uh, ABA equals 15, and AB plus BC equals AB. 15 plus BC equals AB. So what did I do? I had AB there, and then I took AB out, and I wrote 15 instead. Because AB Yes, and so what property is that when you take something out and put something in? Your show quote substitution. So that one substitution. Now we are going to use that a lot in our proofs. We're going to use the substitution property a lot. So whenever two things are equal, you can replace them. Okay? Did you get that one written down, Jake one for number three? Substitution awesome. Okay, now number four, that's easy. I'm going to have you just look at that and figure that one out yourself because that's just an algebraic proof. So you go ahead and look at number four, and um, I bet that you can figure that one out yourself. You may not be able to because you were here. So, Adrian, what did you get for four? Is it division? We add 12 to both sides. Addition property. Okay? Um, so you could also add that in your notes. What did we say? Theorem, postulates, definitions, and let's also add properties to that. So in your notes, where you have that we can use definitions, postulates, theorems, we can also use properties. We can also use properties. So we're going to add that. No, you have it right there. Theorems, oh, did you not write that down? Theorems, postulates, definitions, and properties. Hey, okay. what? Well, you already wrote down that we can use definitions, theorems, and postulates, right? Just add properties to that. Okay? Um, how about number five? Hadley, can you read that one? Angle S and angle W are complementary. Okay, and then can you read number two? Angle S plus measure of angle W equals 90. What do you suppose that reason is? Definition, Definition of complementary angle. And we can uh, we can abbreviate that. I just wrote depth of comp. Okay, because there's a lot of writing in proofs, and so if we can abbreviate things, that's great. Did you get that one, um, Jaquan, for number five? Definition of complementary. Okay, now I want you to look closely at number six, and we did we did one similar to this. So number one, it says angle P is congruent to angle G. That's given. And number two, the measure of angle P is equal to the measure of angle G. What do you suppose that is? Definition of congruent segments. And what would it be in this case? It wouldn't be segments, it would be angles. angles. So we're going to say definition of congruent angle. Now a lot of students, through the years, I've taught geometry for a long time, a lot of times if people don't know what else to write, for their reason, they write definition of congruent angle to definition of congruent segment. The only time you can use that is if you go from equals to congruent or from congruent to equal. So if you just throw your hands up and you're like, I don't know what else to say, so I'm going to say definition of congruent angles, you're probably going to be wrong. The only time we can use that is if we go from equal to congruent or from congruent to equal. Okay, now I want you to think of some other um, definitions that aren't on here that we haven't talked about yet. We talked about right angle, supplementary angles, complementary angles. Are there some other definitions that we might use, Hadley? Vertical. Vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent. That's the definition of them. So that's a definition we could use sometimes. Straight angle. Straight angle is what? Straight line. And so it equals? Uh, 180 degrees. So definition of straight angle. Good. What else? Acute and obtuse. You could use definitions of acute and obtuse. Um, you could use, how about a linear pair? What's a linear pair? Two angles that make a, a line. So that could be another definition that we could use. Um, what else? Are there any other days that you can think of? Midpoint. Oh, angle bisector. 
What does an angle bisector do? It cuts the angle into two congruent angles. Yep. So that's one. We won't use that yet. We're going to start with segments. We're going to start with segments. Um, oh, didn't we have, um, this is not a, what was our angle? Shoot, shoot, shoot. I'm going to find it here quick. Midpoints. When we were doing midpoint, um, didn't we say that, oh, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. I think I am, but didn't we say that this part plus this part equals the whole thing? Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. segment addition. So we'll have that also. Okay. So um, I know you're probably thinking there's no way I could do one of these by myself, and that's okay. You don't have to. We're going to do three of them together right now. I might give you part of the last one to do on your own. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. Answers to these. Where did I put them? Everybody get one. All right. Um, you can close your books for now. Ah, right, here we go. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do on number one, it says we're given that angle A is congruent to angle B. And angle B is congruent to angle B. And we're going to prove that angle A is congruent to angle B. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our two columns. I'm not going to write the given and prove up here because you guys have it. Okay, and I don't want to spend all that time. So, and I'm going to write given here. So I'm going to say angle A congruent to angle B. And angle D congruent to angle E, and that's given. And I'll write here what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove angle A congruent to angle E. Hmm, this looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? If A is congruent to D, and D is congruent to E, then A is congruent to E. Does that bring any bells to you? Anything? Yeah, that's kind of syllogism. It is syllogism, and which of our properties on those algebraic lists was so similar to syllogism? Symmetric. Symmetric. You're close. It was down at the bottom by that one. If A is congruent to B, and B is congruent to C, transitive. So this is basically the transitive property that we're proving right here. But the transitive says that they're equal. Does this say that they're equal? It says they're congruent. So what do you suppose my second step is going to be here? I'm going to convert them to equal. So I'm going to say the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. And the measure of angle D equals the measure of angle E. And what's my reason for that? Definition of congruent angles. Very good. And look how I wrote that. I didn't write many of the words out at all. Def of congruent, and then I just put the symbol for angle. So then I can say, can't I say then that the measure of angle A equals, what does it equal? By that property measure you just said? Angle e. It measures the, equals the measure of angle E. And what's that property that we just said, Trevor? Uh, uh, transitive. Transitive. So that's a transitive property. And that's another property that we're going to use a lot. Substitution and transitive. Okay, am I done? No. Am I almost done? Yeah. Yep, I have one more step to go. And that is that angle A is congruent, congruent to angle E. Why? How can we go from equal to congruent? Definition, definition of congruent angles. Yep, definition of congruent angles. 
says if, ang if the measure is equal, then angles are congruent. That's what the definition is. I really want you to understand this step right here. How we got to that. Because we're going to use that a lot. If this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, then this is equal to this. And that's something that we're going to do a lot. Okay? All right. Looking at this proof right here, tell me where a tricky part might be here. Or you can just say all of it. <laughs> Or do you feel like you understood that one pretty well? Adrian's about ready to fall asleep. <laughs> Jake Swan's eyeballs are bugging out like he's looking at an octopus with 20 arms on it. Okay, let's try another one. The best way to get good at proofs is just to practice. So that's what we're going to do a lot. It's not going to be tons and tons of homework, but there's going to be lots and lots of working on proofs in here. Okay, so number two says we're given that B, C is congruent to E, F. So let's just take a minute and look at that. Okay, so those two segments are congruent. That means they're the same length. If B, C is 5 inches long, how long is E, F? 5 inches. If B, C is 29 feet, how long is E, F? Okay, so that's the first thing that they're telling us. Then they tell us M is the midpoint of BC, and they're telling us N is the midpoint of EF. So what is that? Let's just talk about what that means first. What's true about BM and MC then? They're congruent. What's true about EN and NF? Now, doesn't it make sense that if this is the same length as this, and these two are equal, and these two are equal, what should be true about all four of those points? Yeah, they should be. And we're trying to prove that BM is congruent to EN. And we already kind of said that that makes sense, right? So now we're just going to write down the steps. So kind of, it's kind of like we're writing down our thinking process of knowing that BM is congruent to EN. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to make our two steps. And I'm going to try to prove... I'm writing it down because I don't have it, that BM is equal to EN. So that means our measurements are equal. So number one, I'm going to write down BC, congruent, EF. I'm going to write down, let's abbreviate midpoint. M is midpoint of BC. And N is the midpoint of EF. And that's given. And that's a lot, but we've already talked about it all, so we kind of know what all of that means already, right? Kind of know what it all means. And we've got the picture there for us to look at. Oh, Trevor's already got step two. Trevor, what did you write down for step two? I'm so excited. Uh, uh, segment BC equals segment EF. Segment BC equals segment EF. Very good. I put the measure of segment BC equals the measure of segment EF. You don't have to do the measure on segments, only on angles. So if we use equals on segments, so we're going to say that BC equals EF. And what's our definite or our reason? Definition? Uh, segments, because uh, all lines are congruent, because lines go forever, right? Okay, now we're going to kind of think algebraically here a little bit. How does BM relate to BC? Yeah, so we're going to say BM equals half of BC. And how about EN and EF? Yeah, it would be the same thing. EN is half of EF. And why can we say that? How do we know it's half of it? And, and so that is the definition of a midpoint. So we're going to say that's the definition of a midpoint, is that it cuts it in half. And that's what we just said. And we can say that because the definition says it. We can do it. 
All right, now I'm trying to get that VM equals EN. So let's look here. I'm trying to get this equals to this. Now, what would be true about this, these two? They're the same, because what's true about BC and EF? Yeah. They're congruent, and didn't we say that right here? We did, so can we substitute? First, we've got to say that BC is equal to EF. So let's do that first. Yay. And what's my reason? Oops, no line over that. Sorry. My bad. If BC equals EF, what's my reason? Definition of congruent segments. Okay, and now, what can I write? If these two are equal, can't I substitute one of them in for the other? Can I say BM equals half of EF? Could I put this in right here? I could say BM equals half of EF. And what did I just do? What's my, my reason? Substitute. I substituted. And you can't just write sub because that could be subtraction, but you can write subst. <laughs> hey, I'm almost done. So if BM equals half of EF and EN equals half of EF, don't BM and EN equal each other? Why? Because symmetric. Wait. Well, not symmetric. Isn't it just substitution again? Yep. Or, excuse me, no, and this is confusing. This is a transitive. Because if EN equals half of EF and half of EF equals BM, then EN equals BM. So it's the transitive property. If you've got three things, it's transitive. And then am I done? I think BM equals EN. Yep, yeah, that's what I was trying to prove. Woo! Take a deep breath after mm -hmm. that one. I don't care if you could do this by yourself. I want to know if you understand this process that we did together. Okay? I don't I don't want you to say, yes, I can do it myself. I don't want you to be there yet. But I want you to look at this and understand the process. Okay? Give me fist to five, where are you? And just on just doing it with me. Doing it with me and understanding it. Fist to five, where are you at? Okay, and I don't care if you're at a zero, that's fine. Okay, great, we're gonna do one more together. Number three. Okay, and I'm gonna do my sketch here because we're gonna show lots of things on here. So we have Q, S, P, T, and R. Read the first part of the given for me, please, Levi. S is visible to QP. Okay, so let's look at QP. Take your hand and cover up the rest. S is the midpoint of QP. So what do we know about QS and SP? They're congruent. So we don't we haven't proved any of that yet, but let's go ahead and write that down just so we know. Okay? What else do we know in our given, Gunner? So let's ignore this part and T is the midpoint of PR. So I know that this is congruent to this. Okay, and what else do I know, Adrian? What's the last part? What's it say? P. P is the midpoint of this. P is the midpoint. Oh, I can see how this is going to work out. So what's true about this part and this part? They're the same, aren't they? So really, all four of these little parts are the same, aren't they? Okay? So I'm not going to write any of that down yet. I'm going to make my two columns. And number one, I'm going to write, sometimes if you've got it all written up, 
we just draw an arrow down if it's a lot to write. <laughs> we just say that's given. If you've already written it all down, that's okay. But if it's on a worksheet and it's a whole lot of stuff, we'll just draw the arrow or we'll circle it or whatever. Okay? So, what do you think, where do you think we should start? Anybody have an idea? We're trying to prove that QS equal to TR. Here's, here's what I'm thinking. I know that this is equal to this. I know this is equal to this. And I know this is equal to this. So doesn't this have to be equal to this? Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? Our bell's going to ring in just a few minutes. I'd like you to just try some of this for tomorrow. It doesn't have to be right, and it doesn't have to be done, but I'd like you to spend a good five to ten minutes on it. Do you think you can do that? Oh, poor Savannah. She has a 36-minute video to watch. <laughs>